This is a practice exercise from page 345 in the textbook. We're going to look at a larger molecule. This is acetonitrile. We're going to try to determine the bond angles around each carbon atom, talk about their hybridization, and then count the number of sigma and pi bonds. So in order to do this, it may be helpful to look at that table in your textbook that talks about electron domain geometries and then molecular geometries. So taking a look at the first carbon atom, we're going to treat this as our central atom. So taking a look at this carbon atom, we see that it's got four electron domains. All four of those happen to be bonding electron domains, so we're looking at a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. We're also looking at a tetrahedral molecular geometry, and you should know that that tetrahedral geometry means that we're looking at 109.5 degree bond angles. Taking a look at the second carbon atom, this one only has two electron domains. Remember that this triple bond only counts as one electron domain. It's only attached to one atom at the end. So when I only have two electron domains and they're both bonding, that is going to be a linear molecule or a linear geometry, which is going to give us a 180 degree bond angle. In order to determine the hybridization, we're going to use this chart down here and just match up our geometries with our hybridizations. So our 180 degree, our linear geometry, that means we must have had an sp hybrid carbon atom. So if this carbon atom is sp hybridized, that means we must have two unhybridized p orbitals. Because remember that we have one s orbital and three p orbitals, We've used one of the S and one of the P in order to make this SP hybridized, so we've got two left over that we're not using. If we look at this molecule, the two that we're not using, that's what we're using to make the double bond and the triple bond. If you take a look in your textbook, you can see these three-dimensional pictures. Essentially, in order to make this pi bonding, in order to make these double bonds and triple bonds, we need the unhybridized p orbitals to do that side-to-side -side overlap. So it makes sense that the carbon that has the double and the triple bond is only sp hybridized. Now, taking a look at our carbon atom that had four electron domains with the 109.5 degree bond angles, again, we're going to look a little further down this chart, and we can see that that is going to be sp3 hybridized. That makes sense. We need to have four lobes. In order to have four lobes, we need to combine four orbitals. So we have no unhybridized p orbitals. Which also makes sense because if we look back up here, our sp3 hybridized carbon is not part of any double or triple bonds, it's only single bonds, so it makes sense that it's an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. So let's go ahead and answer the last question here, which is determining the number of sigma bonds and pi bonds. So you should remember that a sigma bond is a single bond, and a pi bond is a multiple bond, so either a double or a triple bond. And again, the pictures in your textbook will probably help out, but those double and triple bonds always have a core of a single sigma bond. So there's always a sigma bond in the middle. Remember, that's a direct overlap of either hybrid or unhybridized orbitals. So sigma bonds are direct overlaps. Pi bonds, either double or triple, are that side-to-side -side overlap. So let's take a look here. Since I see one, two, three, four, five single bonds, remember the inside here is one single bond, that means that I must have five sigma bonds. If I take a look at this multiple bond here, I know that this triple bond is composed of one sigma bond in the middle, and then I've got one pi bond making the double, a second pi bond making the triple, so there are two pi bonds in there. So that means I have a total of seven bonds in this molecule, five sigmas and two pi's, and if I count the number of lines, that should agree. So I see seven shared electron pairs, I have seven bonds, five of which are sigmas, again those are all of the single bonds, and the center of the multiple bond, I have two pi bonds, one for the double, one for the triple. Again, you really want to get a sense of what these sigma and pi bonds look like in terms of what type of overlap is happening, so check out the pictures in your textbook to make sure you really understand the difference between the direct overlap and the side-to-side -side overlap.